In this tutorial I'll quickly show you how the uh, Moodle lessons can be decorated to be more visually interesting. So here we are, we're in a lesson, I'm in preview. Um, you can see that there's a certain design layout and aesthetic that's been cho chosen here with images that float to the right of the screen, um, the particular look and feel around fonts, background colours, etc. As the students progress through this, you can introduce such notions as branching. So lessons can be really powerful for things like scenario-based learning, where you can give students choices and the, their choices affect the outcomes of the lesson. So let's have a look at this now from behind the skin of things. I'm going to quickly flick over to the edit view. And if you're not familiar with the edit view, it's got two uh, views. One is collapse, where you just see a quick um, overview and then an expanded view where you can see every slide in turn. This can be quite useful as you're establishing your scenario and seeing how things lay out on screen. So what I'll do is quickly jump into the editor of one of these slides to see how things are built. Now much of the business end of this happens in the code so I'm going to jump into the code view now and to just quickly show you what's going on here. I'll be providing these code snippets so that you have them available to you. Now it's quite hard to read this in the, the native editor, but here are the important parts. What's happening is it's invoking a CSS file. That CSS file is providing all the decoration. And then it has an area where you place your content, which is found down here. Let me show you that in an easier view so that you've got a better understanding of things. This is the actual code snippet which I'll be sharing with you and you can reuse. The first thing to note is here is where it's invoking the CSS file. This CSS for the purposes of this I've placed just on a public web server. It happens to be my own Dropbox but I'd recommend that you place that perhaps in Alfresco or on your own public web server. You don't want to have to reproduce that CSS every time you use it. You don't want to embed it into the slides because then if something was wrong you would need to re-edit every slide that used it. So centralize that somewhere outside of Moodle um, and again Alfresco is a really good choice for that. Lower down is the image that's inserted and I'll very uh, in a very detailed way I'll show you how that happens in a sec. So we'll skip that for now and then there's the content section here. So if I now bounce back into Moodle, the great advantage of doing this all in the editor is that now this text is just editable text. So if I want to make something bold, you'll notice that that gets styled up in a particular way. If I make it italic, if I introduce a new heading, and I might make that heading too. I'm using keyboard shortcuts for these but you can of course do all of these through the menus at the top here. So once that boilerplate is in place it's very quick then to edit up the content, introduce new text and to style that up. When it comes to the choices of images for this type of scenario based learning I turn to Getty Images and there's a rationale for that. One of the challenges when you go to Creative Commons sourced images, which I love and are fabulous, but is to get images which are thematic, where you have the same repeating characters. And often if you're designing a scenario, you need to reuse perhaps a particular student in a circumstance. And so you need really stock art for that. Getty Images has a massive collection of images, but it also allows you for free to embed large amounts of their imagery, mostly because you're doing their advertising for them. So let me give you an example. Perhaps I'm looking for a student in a library with a laptop. Okay, so I've got some interesting images here. I've also got a set of filters on the left and I deliberately want to choose to filter for images that you allow you to embed. And so now you can see I've got a collection of high quality images that I could start to use. But the reason that Getty now becomes powerful is not only can I use these images, and I'll show you the technique for that in just a sec, but very often 
they are in a collection of similar images where those characters uh, repeat so that you can use a, the same characters again and again. Okay, so let me return to my image choice. This one here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle over to the embed. I'm going to select this embed code. I might first of all choose a size. I find that 500 is too big, so I'm going to go for this size here. Copy this embed code. I'm going to bounce back over to the editor, jump into code just for a moment, and I'm going to look for a section at the top of the page. Now it's the bit that you you might see that there's some comments here, so I need to take all the stuff that was originally in this position and paste in the new code. Update that. And you'll notice that that image has now been placed in play. It is also um, made that image float off to the right and put a drop shadow, etc. I've, I've added that to the CSS, so anytime you use a Getty image, it, it basically decorates it in that particular way. And so there's some efficiencies there as well. So that's basically it from the editor point of view. I'll introduce you to the CSS now. So this is a CSS. You might not need to change much here, but some of the areas you might want to consider are things like your cho choice of fonts. I've imported a Google font called Roboto in this instance. You could swap that to whatever font you like. Um, this is the major design features of the slide itself. So that includes things like the background color, the borders. You might have noticed it had a, a, a sort of a picture frame border around the outside. So you can quickly go in and adjust that. There's some stuff here that deals with the heading styles. And the remainder of it deals with, I guess, just decoration. So if it's if it's bold, let's make it a different colour, etc, etc. There's also more esoteric stuff here about putting in block quotes if you want to include them, um, but you're not likely to need to change any of that. So that's basically it. Um, I'll provide with this recording the various HTML and CSS files. I'll also make a backup of the lesson itself that will be an MBZ file that you'll be able to then import into your own Moodle. Cheers!